The Man Who Loved Clowns, 2005, is a young adult novel and writer June Ray Wood's debut. Loosely based on Wood's experiences with her Down syndrome-afflicted brother, Richard, the novel follows the emotional journey of Delrita Jensen, an emotionally distant 13-year-old who imagines moving through life in an invisible protective shell, shut off from almost everyone she knows, save for her mentally disabled uncle, Punky. But when an unspeakable tragedy lays waste to her carefully calibrated emotional shields, Del Rita finally begins the painful process of emerging from her psychological cocoon to face the world. Del Rita is at school in Missouri as she tries to avoid Avenel Shackelford, a new girl who doesn't know about Del Rita's invisibility and, therefore, tries to talk with her when the two are assigned to share a math book. Since neither student has any friends, Del Rita feels guilty about being a jerk to Avenel. However, her guilt is outweighed by the fear of embarrassment she feels when other kids see Punky and are frightened of him. Del Rita's anxiety deepens when she remembers that her Aunt Queenie and Uncle Bert will be coming to her house tonight to celebrate Punky's birthday. Del Rita is deeply bothered by the way Aunt Queenie criticizes Del Rita's mom for spoiling Punky. In Del Rita's mind, Punky deserves to be spoiled because, as someone with Down syndrome and approaching the age of 40, he likely doesn't have much time left. Later, Del Rita and her family travel to Silver Dollar City to whittle blocks of wood into shapes, one of Del Rita's favorite hobbies. Her father tells her she should try to carve a flying swan, even though it's much more difficult than the shapes that Del Rita already struggles to complete. When her parents decide to go to an antiques market, they leave Punky behind so he doesn't accidentally break anything. Del Rita is pleased that her parents believe her mature enough to take care of Punky all by herself. But while on their trip, her parents are involved in a traffic accident and tragically killed. Del Rita finally lets loose of her emotions, screaming and weeping. It's only when she thinks of Punky and how she must be strong for him that she settles down. Before going home with Aunt Queenie and Uncle Bert, where Del Rita and Punky will live from now on, their friend from the whittling shop, Walt, gives her a package and tells her it will mean something someday. Life at Aunt Queenie's is difficult for Del Rita. Unlike her mother, Aunt Queenie wants Punky to join a work program, while Del Rita believes that the workshop for the disabled is only a step away from slave labor. Nine days after her parents' death, Del Rita finally works up the courage to go back to school. On her way, she opens the package from Walt. It is a carving of a flying swan, like the one her father encouraged her to make. It comes with a note from Walt that resonates with Del Rita, life is like an untouched block of wood. We can carve out a beautiful niche for ourselves, or we can leave it unused and unproductive on a shelf. Heeding those words, Del Rita becomes more sociable at school, especially with Avenel, who becomes her best friend. Del Rita even develops a crush on Avenel's older brother, Tree. But while things are going better than ever at school, the situation at Aunt Queenie's house continues to unravel. Queenie nears a breaking point with regard to Punky, who acts out by pouring Queenie's expensive shampoo down the toilet and cutting the leaves off her plants. When Queenie finally resolves to send Punky to the workhouse for other disabled men and women, Del Rita explodes with anger and says terrible things to Queenie. After the blowout, Del Rita feels ashamed. While it's a great sign of Del Rita's progress that she lets herself feel things, her enraged behavior that night shows she still has a long way to go before she is able to control those feelings. With the decision made to send Punky to work, Del Rita accompanies him on his first day. She is surprised by the conditions, which, contrary to Del Rita's imagination, are not at all slave-like, and the happy demeanor of most of the workers. An attraction even develops between Punky and one of the women who work there who also has Down syndrome. Back at school, however, Avenel blames Del Rita for an incident in which it's revealed to their classmates that Avenel's father is in prison. As her friendship with Avenel falls apart, she grows closer to Avenel's brother Tree, who asks her to the school dance. But on the night of the dance, he never arrives. With Punky finally living a fulfilling life away from Del Rita, Avenel refusing to forgive Del Rita, and Tree mysteriously standing her up, Del Rita feels more alone than ever. When Tree tries to apologize, explaining that his mother was in labor that night, Del Rita receives his apology coldly, beginning to revert to her old habits of pushing people away. To make matters worse, Punky becomes sick, sicker than Del Rita has ever seen him before. No longer able to work, he moves home where a doctor advises the family that he is dying. A few days later, 
Punky dies in his sleep. Del Rita cradles his body, pleading with him not to go. At Punky's funeral, Del Rita has an epiphany after seeing all the people who came to pay their respects. Touched by all the townsfolk who cared about Punky, Del Rita realizes that while it's less painful to be invisible, the best way to honor Punky is to be involved in other people's lives and to try to make them happy, just as Punky did. The book ends as Del Rita resolves never to hide from people again. Named for the clown figurines Del Rita carves for Punky, The Man Who Loved Clowns is a potent debut, according to Publishers Weekly, adding in its review that Wood artfully interweaves issues of loneliness, first romance, and parental death. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.